By the end of this video, we'll have added hidden areas to our game, which will fade in when you enter them and fade out when you exit. These can be fun for hiding secret items, enemies, or traps. So cool, let's check it out. First of all, I've added this new tile map called Decor, which I have things like signs on. These will have no collision and adjust for decoration. I'm gonna put something on this platform over here for us to hide. So some flowers and some plants to make this symmetrical. What I wanna do is flip this sprite. Just a handy little tip. If you hold down shift and then press the left square bracket, it'll flip your sprite horizontally. If you hold shift and press the right bracket, it'll flip it vertically. But cool, now we've got some little flowers that I'm going to hide behind a secret area. And just to make it more interesting, I'll hide a health item as well. Cool, so now we go to our hierarchy, right click and go 2D object sprites square. Then what I'm going to do is drag this square over to where we want to hide our items. You can click this rect tool in the scene view, which gives you these little options to drag out your shape. To make sure this is always in front of your items, what you can do is select your furthest away sorting layer, mine's player, and then in the order in layer, if you just type one or any higher number, it'll push this to the front of the layers. Or you could just add one more layer called hidden area, but I'll do it the easy way. Now what I'm gonna do is change the color and use the eyedropper and select our background color. Or you could replace this sprite renderer sprite with whatever your background is, in case you have a pattern or something. Next, I'm gonna click add component and add a box collider 2D. And then I'm gonna click is trigger. Now I'm gonna click add component again, go to new script and call this secret area. I'll double click on this to open it up. And in here we'll add a public float called fade duration. And I'll set this to a default of one. Then I'm gonna want a sprite renderer. I'll call this sprite renderer. A color, which I'm gonna call hidden color. And we're also gonna want a reference to a coroutine to store our current coroutine. Cool, now in start, we're gonna go sprite renderer equals get component sprite renderer. And then hidden color is gonna equal sprite renderer dot color. Not gonna want this update so we can delete that, but we are gonna want an on trigger enter 2D. And we're gonna want to check if our collision dot game object dot compare tag is equal to player. Then we'll check if our current coroutine is not equal to null. We're gonna call stop coroutine and pass in our current coroutine. So if our player has walked in, we're gonna set current coroutine to equal start coroutine. And we'll call a function that we haven't read it yet called fade sprite. So let's write fade sprite. We'll go private i enumerator fade sprite. And in the parameters, we're gonna pass in a ball called fade out. So we want it to turn transparent if this is true. We're gonna want a color called start color. And we're gonna set this equal to sprite renderer dot color. Then we'll want a color of our target color. And if we are fading out, we're gonna want it to be transparent. So we need to make a new color and make it a transparent color. So that'll be hidden color dot R, hidden color dot G, and hidden color dot B. E. And for the last parameter will be the alpha which we're setting to zero. So the alpha is the transparency. And we'll go colon, so if we're not fading out, we want to fade in, we'll set it back to our hidden color. And we're gonna need another little float here, and we'll just call this time fading. Then we'll say while time fading is less than fade duration, oh, and we'll set time fading to zero F. Then inside our while, we'll go sprite renderer dot color equals color dot lerp which you can see interlopes between colors A and B by T, which basically means it's gonna change from one color to another over this amount of time. So we're gonna go start color, target color, time fading divided by fade duration. And under this, we'll go time fading plus equals time dot delta time, then call yield return now. And at the very end, we'll go sprite renderer dot color equals target color. Then up in on trigger enter 2D in our failed fade sprite, when we enter, we do want it to fade out. So we'll set this to be true. And under this, we'll write another on trigger exit 2D. Copy what's from the trigger enter and in fade sprite will instead say false. Cool, so now if we go back to Unity and press play, we can go over to our little secret hidden area. You can see it fades in and fades out. The only thing is, I don't know if you can tell, but it seems to stutter and not fade smoothly. There, you just saw it. Oh, <laughs> it's kind of freaking out when I enter and leave very quickly. This is because both coroutines are being called at the same time. As we enter and leave, we keep calling different coroutines. So if we go back to the script, an enemy, get him. If we go back to the script and in our on trigger enter 2D, inside our if, when we know it's our player, we want to say if our current coroutine does not equal null, we want to call stop coroutine and pass in our current coroutine. Then copy this code and do the same thing in our on trigger exit 2D. And that's all you need. Back to Unity. Now when we enter our hidden area, you can see it fades in and fades out. And if we do leave, it'll stop and start the other coroutine as needed. That's a lot of enemies, oh my God. This just makes things a bit smoother. So as soon as you leave, it'll start fading out. And as soon as you enter, it'll start fading back in. Cool, I didn't actually rename this hidden area, so I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna drag this into my prefabs folder to make this a prefab, and I'll show you some fun things you can do. So we can, of course, drag multiple of these onto our scene. 
when we press play. You can make this hidden area any size you want. Just edit the size of your sprite and the box collider around it. Oh my god, hidden enemy. And yeah, you can make some cool fun stuff. Something else you could hide behind these hidden areas could maybe be like a power up item, like we're gonna make in our next episode. In the next episode, we're gonna be making a temporary speed boost item, which will give you the kind of idea of how to implement any other kind of speed boost or buff items. So cool, I'll see you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.